Hello and welcome back to Macrame Beginners and welcome to your lesson all about chord. It's pretty confusing how to choose this stuff when you first start out and it can be referred to as so many different names like string, twine, rope, chord um, and it can all just be too much when you're also trying to think about width and colour as well. So we're going to break it down today and make it super simple. So to start off with, I've separated the chords. Over here we've got what's called single twist chord. So you can see, if I just hold up this one, that it's literally just a single group of many twisted cotton fibres. So let's see if I can get it to focus there, there we go. So it's all just wound in one big, one big um, twist on the cone like this one just here. So this one, these collection here is what's called three ply. You can see now that they're different to the single twist in that they have three groups of twisted fibers all wound around each other. So they have got a little bit more structure to them. So they're a little bit more rigid, I guess. They hold their shape a bit better when you're nodding compared to these ones which are really soft and really malleable to knot. So your knots are gonna end up much flatter with this single twist, whereas with the three ply, they're gonna stand out a little more. So I've got a little example over here for you. So if we just have a look up here, we've got three ply and then we've got single twist. So they're fairly similar. This is the four mil thickness, but you can see there's kind of a little bit more texture with the three ply than the single twist. And maybe if I show you to the side as well, this sits a little flatter compared to this, which is just a little bit more thick and chunky on the sides. Okay, so back to the cord. We've got all different widths now to contend with. So starting over here with the single twist, we're starting with three mil, got a couple of four mils here, a five mil, a seven mil, and a nine mil. So you can see they're all fairly similar, um, but you know they obviously do go up in size as well. So. It really is just up to what you want to achieve when you're choosing width. So obviously it's going to take you like forever to do a huge, massive tapestry wall hanging with the three mil versus the nine mil is going to be chunkier and it's going to be easier to make a larger project with just because you don't have to tie so many knots to get the distance. The middle range is kind of, yeah, this uh, five, uh, four, five, seven. Um, particularly for beginners, you probably want to go with with a thicker one just because it's easier to handle and you get more kind of, um, I don't know, chance to create a pattern that's not going to take you like 10 years to develop. Um, you can, yeah, create a larger wall hanging in less time, I guess. Whereas when you get a little bit more savvy and a little bit more fast, then I think I would probably go for this, the smaller ones, the threes and the fours. My absolute favorite to work with is fours just because it is so versatile and you can get jam a lot of pattern into a design, um, but then you're kind of not also spending years and years on it and you can still get that detail. Uh, I hope that made sense. <laughs> so also now we've got the widths in the three ply. So here I've got the one mil. I stock this in just the color range. I don't have that in the natural. Um, then we've got the two mil, three mil, couple of four mils, five mil, seven mil. And then I've got a really chunky 12 mil here as well because you can really see that's, that's just for massive pieces and for adding um, thickness and you know, little accents to your smaller wall hangings. So if we go back down here, really this one mil is just for jewelry and super intricate small pieces. You can see just how tiny it is. Um, it's not even gonna focus on it, I don't think, because <laughs> it's so small. Um, 
And then the two mil, obviously as well, it's really thin still. So I probably wouldn't uh, recommend that for any large scale wall hangings or even medium scale wall hangings. It would just take too long to do. And then you've got the three mil, four mil, five mil, seven mil, which is again, that kind of middle range. Again, four mil is my favorite. Um, the main thing, main difference with this kind of rope. Um, so I actually refer to the three ply more as rope and the single twist more as cord. I don't know why rope to me just, I think, uh, really um, stands out as something that's kind of braided or, or twisted more, whereas the cord is just more singular. But I think other people, uh, they, they use the terms interchangeably. So the, the main difference, what I was saying before, is that when you want to unwind this or fray it in any way to make a fringe, um, then with the single twist, it's just a matter of combing that out. So you just get a comb and comb through it and it will become a fringe. Whereas this one, you're gonna to have to unwind the fibers into its three different cords and then you can comb that out. So it is an extra added layer, which can be a benefit or it can be a disadvantage because um, if you just want a fringe, you kind of want to skip that process of unraveling the three cords. But also unraveling the three cords gives you a benefit because, for example, this piece here, I've knotted the top of it with um, using the whole three ply. And then down here, I've unwinded the three ply and I've been able to use some of those cords for little individual knots down the bottom. So it does add another layer, like um, another option for you to add smaller detailing on top of larger detailing if you unwind those three fibers. So there's definitely a benefit there as well. Also, um, yeah, like we saw before, the three ply definitely holds its structure a little bit more. So if you're doing really large scale pieces, let's say, you know, like a wedding arbor or a really large wall hanging, you probably don't want these ends to fray all the time because they're going to fluff up and there's going to be cotton flying everywhere and um, it can be kind of annoying because they get tangled. Here is another example of single twist. So this is the nine mil that I've used here. So it's really thick and chunky, super detailed. Oh, well, it's not super detailed. It's um, the pattern really stands out. Um, because it's so chunky. So this one took me hardly any time at all just because the rope is so thick it creates those patterns really quickly. So the last kind of type is this braided cord. So you can see here that it's unlike the other two just because it actually is physically braided together. So this is what you kind of conventionally think of as rope just because it's, it's braided together in a way that won't come undone. So super rigid, um, really good for, let's say making something that you <laughs> never want to untangle, you never want to knot, um, maybe like a plant hanger that's gonna be outside and you don't want it to be affected by any weather. Although the cotton isn't really weather, uh, like can't be in the rain or anything cause it will just go moldy and yucky. Um, but yeah, really rigid, holds its shape really well. Um, probably pretty good for practicing um, if you're a beginner, but I probably wouldn't recommend it for, you know, large scale wall hangings or anything. Um, this tends to, if you cut it too short, you can see that it kind of, it won't fall down, like won't droop like this one would. So see if I cut that like that, it's kind of just gonna droop down. Whereas this, because it is so structured, it will kind of just stick out awkwardly. Um, which you don't really want to happen. Um, you also can't comb it out unless you want to spend like 20 years doing it. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's mainly the types that you're going to see. <clears throat> so again, we'll just rehash. So single twist, <clears throat> just a single group of fibers often referred to as cord. Then we've got the three ply, which is three fibers all twisted together. Really good for adding different layers of detail because you can also fringe it as well at the end. And then you've got braided, which is probably good for practicing, good for really structured pieces, but not much else in my opinion. And then you've got all the widths to choose from. Probably my favorite is four to five mil. Um, that's probably a really good um, starting point. 
Another thing is, so your reels, um, these are just, this is just my four mil and my five mil reel, but um, they come in one kilo, usually come in one kilo and two kilos. Um, and the trade-off, I guess, with the widths and the length that you get on your reel. So if you say get a three mil one kilo reel, there's gonna be a lot more on that one kilo in lengthwise compared to a four or a five mil. That's confusing, I know, but just digest that for a minute. Um, you obviously have a bit of a trade-off there. So if you just want lots of length to practice with, but you're not too concerned about the width, then I'd go with a thinner width. Whereas if you really want a particular width to achieve a certain look, then I would just um, stick with the width and don't worry too much about how much length you get on the reel. All right, I hope that was helpful for you. Um, good luck with choosing and make sure you send me a message if you've got any questions. Okay. Cheerio, bye.